Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game I'm making using my own engine. And this week I'm going to be programming bees and honey production. So it is the 16th of September today. I've just spent the last three weeks editing the Gamescom videos, so I'm so excited about getting back to game dev today. And I've got an exciting new feature to work on. It's going to be all about the bees. So I did the planning for this yesterday. First I kind of brainstormed it on paper and then I turned that into some more concrete tasks on Trello. And now I'm ready to get started and work through those tasks. So I've got started by making a quick model for a beehive. I then used my program to convert that into an icon and then in the game I've added the beehive item which I can place into the world to get some beehives. They don't do anything yet though, but I'll be programming the functionality next. I've started work on the honey production part of this update now. So first I had to create multiple model stages showing different amounts of honey in the beehive and I learned how to do this using a tutorial for creating dripping icing on donuts. I thought it would look kind of similar. I think it turned out quite good. Um, and then in the game I've just been testing this. So for now the beehives have a honey content and that just slowly goes up over time and then as it does that it calculates which of those model stages to use based on the amount of honey in it. So as the contents go up there's visibly more honey showing on the beehive. Moving on to honey harvesting next. So I've just created two new items for the game. The honey jar and the empty honey jar and just started writing the codes for the honey taking tool which is going to handle all the mechanics for harvesting honey. So I've got a basic version of the harvesting tool set up. So it's an object interaction tool, which means it can interact with any hive objects in the world, as long as they have some honey in them. And then the action, it's not instant, it, has, it takes a certain amount of time, and throughout the action, honey is removed from the hive, and then put into honey jars, which are added into your inventory. So let me show you this in the game. I've got my empty jars here and I can now use them to take the honey from the hives. And you can see while I'm doing that, I'm getting honey in my inventory. I'm just working on a couple of effects for when you're harvesting the honey. So I've added the particle effect and then this shaking effect for the hive, which is kind of interesting. So I'll show you it in the code. Here's the shake effect. It's made up of two components. One is just a basic sine wave, and then the other is this ramp function, which looks like this in the code. And what's going on here is I've got the sine wave, which just goes on forever. And then the ramp function starts at zero, and it stays at zero until you activate it. And then it will make its way up to one, and then stay at one. And then when it's deactivated, it will just make its way back down to zero and stay at zero. And then what I do is I multiply these two together, and the result is I've got that sine wave, but it then has this smooth fade in and fade out part, which just allows the animation to start and stop nice and smoothly. Um, so I can show you it in slow motion. When I stop the tool, you can see it slowly stops rocking and goes back to standing still. One thing that I'm still not quite sure about is that at the moment when you harvest stuff in the game, whether you're picking fruit or cutting down trees or harvesting vegetables, everything has items flying into your inventory to show that you've got the items. And the fact that that then doesn't happen with the honey feels a little bit off and maybe the player would at first be confused and wonder if they're actually getting any items from this. But then I did just try having the honey pots flying into your inventory and it feels a little bit off having the pots popping out of the hives like that. So I'm not completely sure about this at the moment, but I'll come back to it later because I want to move on to more of the fundamental features first. I've just very quickly tried adding some sound effects, so here's how the harvesting sounds now. Mm. 
It is 20 past 8 on a cloudy September morning. I've been working on the hives for about three days now, so I think it's about time that I implemented some actual bees. So I've just made a quick bee model. Not sure if this is going to be the final one, but it'll do fine for now. And here it is in the game. Not doing much at the moment, um, but I've given it a bee component, and now I just need to program all the functionality. So I'm starting off by working on the movement. I've just been trying to program it to go to wherever I click, which so far is not working at all. Slight improvement, it's now facing the target, but seems to be moving away from it backwards. So I've got some really basic movement working for the bee now. It simply travels at a constant speed. When it reaches a target, it just turns to face the next one and continues traveling towards it. Just added a quick bit of animation code so that the bee now flaps around, um, Aquilinox style. I'm not actually going to animate the wings, but I think this looks fine. Up until now, the bee was basically just following 2D points, but now it's able to handle different heights as well. Last up, I just wanted to implement landing, so I can now tell the bee to land on this flower, for example, and you'll see it slows down and then comes to a complete stop on the flower. It was a little bit fiddly getting this to work because I want it to be very accurate so it can land on individual flowers. So I have it slowing down as it gets close to the target, just to give it time to definitely be facing in exactly the right direction. And then right at the end, it slows down to a, a complete stop. And it works pretty well, even with like a sharp turn at the end, it's very good at landing pretty much exactly where I want it to. So I'm pretty happy with the state of the movement for now. So I'm getting started on behaviors next. So firstly, when you place a hive, it now spawns a bee. And then the bee has a very simple behavior right now. It just generates these path nodes and it goes towards them. And when it reaches one, it just generates another one in a random position. So the bees just wander around aimlessly at the moment. Working more on the bee behaviors, I've started using behavior trees, which is a system that I already have in my engine. I was using it for the villagers in the town area as well. And I've just been setting up a pretty simple behavior tree for the bees. So after they initially leave the hive, they get into this um, endless loop of wandering around for a bit, and then they visit the hive, and then they go back to wandering and so on. Um, and I've just been setting that up in the code here. Let me just show you one of these actions in the code. So this is the code for getting the bee to enter the hive. And mostly what these actions have to do is to just generate path nodes in the correct position. And then that movement code that I wrote earlier does the rest. So I can show you this in the game here. We've got a bee just going around doing his wandering. And then at some point it's going to generate these path nodes to take him into the hive. And if I speed up, you can see I had to make it do quite a big run up so that it has time to start facing the correct direction because um, otherwise it enters the hole at a weird angle and then clips through the roof. But this way with the long run up, it ends up being pretty accurate and it goes pretty much straight through the hole. To finish up today, I've just been creating some models for different tiers of hives because homegrown is all about upgrading and increasing your productivity and it's going to be the same with the bees. So you're going to be able to spend more money to get better hives and um, the better hives obviously have more capacity for a start so they can store more honey which means that you don't have to empty them as often so less manual maintenance and then currently the higher tier hives spawn more bees in them and obviously more bees means faster honey production. I have also been considering that maybe there could be a way for you to get extra bees to add to your hives but I'm not sure yet. At the moment it's just the higher the tier of the hive the more bees you get. So 
so I'm moving on to the next part of this feature today, which is going to be all about flowers that you can place around your beehive. The bees will land on it sometimes and it will increase your uh, honey production speed. Yesterday evening I just made a quick draft for some models, so I'm going to try them out in the game today. Just been programming the life cycle for these flowers, so I've created four model stages, and then I can show you it in the game, so I can plant these seeds around the hive. These will then grow into flowers over time, obviously not this fast, I've just sped it up here. And when fully grown they have this freshness value, which decreases over time, and then eventually the leaves go brown, and then finally the flower dies and switches to that final model stage. I've just been working on having the flowers register with hives when they're added to a tile and vice versa as well. So the hives and the flowers now know about each other and this allows me to give the beehives this productivity value uh, which increases based on how many flowers you've got surrounding the hive. So the more flowers you have, the faster the bees are going to produce honey. But it only works if the flowers are fresh. So once the flowers have died, they don't count anymore and you have to replace them, which is what I'm working on at the moment. So I'm pretty much done with the flowers now. And the idea of the flowers is that they're meant to be a cheap way of increasing your honey production, much cheaper than buying new hives. But the trade-off is, that they require more manual maintenance because when they die, you then have to cut them back. And this is what I've just been working on. Um, you get the seeds back when you cut them, so you don't have to buy more seeds. Um, it's just the maintenance cost of having to cut them down and then having to replant them. Uh, the more bees you have, actually the faster the flowers decay, but you can buy higher tier flowers which last a lot longer, so it's a lot less manual maintenance for you, but they obviously cost a lot more. Let me just show you quickly in Trello where we are now in the whole scheme of things. So these are all the tasks that I've done so far, and I'm now up to the getting the bees to land on the flowers. That's what I'm going to be working on next. I've just very quickly planned that out and broken it down into the individual tasks that I need to work through now. I've just finished implementing the landing action for the bees. So the way this works is it finds a nearby flower. Uh, if it doesn't find one, then obviously it fails. If it does find one, then it creates a path to that flower. And this was the complicated bit because I really didn't want the bee to crash through any hives as it descends down to the flower. So most of this code here is to do with generating path nodes um, to get to create a nice clear descent path for the bee. So let me show you it's in action in the game. So here you can see that the bee has decided to land on this flower here and it's generated a node there, but it also generates this approach node in a nearby tile that also doesn't have a hive. So it goes there first and then it knows that it's got a clear descent towards the flower and it's not gonna go through any hives. So it then just goes, lands on the flower, stays there for a bit and then it takes off again taking off in a direction that doesn't take it through a hive and then it just goes back to its normal behavior so last up i'm working on a stinging mechanic so that sometimes when you're harvesting honey, you get stung by the bees. Um, I would actually like one of the bees to literally come up and, and like sting your cursor. That doesn't happen yet, but it, I'll implement that at some point. For now, there are just a few effects for when you get stung. So there's a sound effect, and there's also a couple of like UI overlays that pop up when you get stung. And then there's also uh, a particle effect that shows the honey spinning out of the hive because what happens when you get stung is that it interrupts your harvesting and any remaining honey in the hive is just lost uh, and that's the downside of getting stung 
you end up getting a lot less honey than you would have done if you weren't stung. Next I've been making these models for the gloves item, which you can now buy in the game. These obviously help you to not get stung. You can also upgrade them as well to increase the protection. And when you do that, the icon changes as well. Just makes its way through these model stages and also changes the color. And now I just need to work on calculating what the chances are of you getting stung based on the tier of, of your gloves. So here's the calculation I've come up with. It still needs a bit of balancing, but the general idea works. So I'll give you some examples in the game. So if you try and harvest without the gloves, obviously you've got a pretty high chance of getting stung. So it's definitely a good idea to get yourself some gloves so that you can harvest more reliably. But the more bees there are in the beehive, the higher the chance is. So if I try and harvest these higher tier hives, again, there's quite a big chance of me getting stung and that's why you would want to upgrade your gloves because that's then going to allow you to handle these higher tier hives and get all of the honey out of them without being stung. So let's finish up with a demonstration of the whole bee feature in action. So I've just added this new shop to the town area where you can buy all the bee related stuff. And I'm just gonna start off by getting a few of these basic beehives, which I can place in my farm and the bees will get straight to work making honey. After a while, I can harvest the honey using these empty jars, but I'm quite likely to get stung. So I should probably buy some protective gloves from the shop. And while I'm here, I'll also buy some wild flowers which I can plant around the hives, and these will increase the productivity of my bees so that they make honey faster. They do have a downside though, which is more manual maintenance, because the flowers will eventually die, and then you'll need to cut them back and replace them. Once you've got a basic farm, you can of course upgrade everything to make your bee farm more and more productive and efficient. So for example, a basic bee farm like this produces around 14 honey per minute, and requires an average of like 9.7 clicks per minute to maintain it. And that includes things like emptying the hives and replanting the flowers. But over time, you'll be able to invest more and more into your setup and upgrade everything. So here's an example farm with tier four of everything. And this produces almost 100 honey per minute, but only requires an average of 1.5 manual clicks. But of course, this setup is a lot more expensive and you'll also need to upgrade your glove to avoid getting stung. I haven't done much balancing for this yet, so these are just some example numbers that I'm using at the moment, and there are going to be even more tiers in the future, but hopefully this gives you a rough idea of how it's all going to work. So that's all for the bees for now. I'll definitely be coming back to them to do more work. Uh, if you want to see what I've got planned, you can have a look on my Trello page, it is public. Um, and in the current features list, you'll find the bees, and there I list out all of my to-dos and ideas for the bees. Before I finish, I want to say a massive thank you to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Dan Andrus, Maximilian H, Marcus Rechel, Vjechu, Daryl Zuniger, Kevin Schau, Peter Westhazen, Ingo Moore, Helson Taveras, Andrew Romans, Marys, Shadeless Fox, Kimo Tamio, Ross from Two Minute Tabletop, Nika Asgazada, Zanil Ambakar, Atomic Code, Walden Yan, Chris Naismith, Alan Lance, Wonuff, Dieter Reinert, Harry Chung, Christoph Herpo, Matthias Bader, Hagen Vingard, Miggy Doze, Marek Mikolajczyk, Timothy Gibbons, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all again in the next one.